financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures, what would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. We define ourselves far too often by our past failures. We look at our past and we say, well, that's me. That's not you. You are this person right now. You're the person who's learned from those failures. And you can choose to be the hero of your own movie right now. Write down your goals. Write down things you want to improve. Write down things you won't tolerate from yourself. Write down things that you've done in the past that you never want to see yourself do again. And go forth from here as the hero of your own movie. Build momentum. Build confidence and momentum with each good decision that you make from here on out. You can do it. Anyone can do it. We live in unique times. We live in one of the rarest times in human history where you can choose almost all of the input that comes your way. Whether it's the movies that you watch, the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, you can choose to be inspired. Do that. Do that. And be the hero of your own movie. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a golden rule, and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and loving, you're not going to enjoy this life. You're just not. You're going to be problems everywhere you go. You're going to have problems everywhere you go. you got to figure out a way to enjoy this life. It's not because of Jesus. It's not because of Moses. It's not because of anybody that may or may not have ever existed. It's because that's how you fit in better in the world. That's how you stay positive. And it doesn't have to be some shit that was written 5,000 years ago on in animal skins that doesn't have to be the golden rule because it's old you know that's dumb we need to figure out like now today what what is you know the best way to live your life what is the you know there, there's got to be ways you can be putting forward the most positive energy I mean we know objectively what's causing pollution we know objectively what's causing birth defects and you know and are we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins we know objectively all this stuff we know how to organize our world and yet we don't do it we know how to organize our health and yet very few people do it we know all these things the right path to like being like a happy healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do take care of your body take care of your health take care of your mind your stress meditate be kind to people we all know that I mean you ask anybody they know how to get by and to be the the the, the most evolved version of you that you can be I mean it's not like a, a magical checklist if you talk to people about it you said okay here you're, you got a person you want to improve them what are the things that you're gonna do to them Okay, well, if I was a life coach, the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy. I don't mean a diet just to lose weight. I mean just healthy foods in your body, v many, many vegetables, vegetables, a lot of good, good quality protein, a lot of water, stop the sodas, stop the bullshit. Start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving, it's flowing better, there's less tension in it, your mind feels like relaxed and, and you enjoy every single moment of the day better. Step one, everybody knows that step, right? What's step two? Be cool to people. Be nice to as many people as you can. Smile at as many people as you can. Have them smile back at you. Tip well when you go to restaurants. Just do the most you can. Be as nice as you can, you know, and just still manage to not have people walk all over you. Just get through this life as nice as you can what else do what you want to do with your life right don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money don't don't do that do what you want to do do what the fuck is it that you really want to do because if someone else is doing it you can do it you know I mean everybody makes their own path through this world but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really feel pulled to you know, just for whatever reason, they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it or told them to take the shortcut or, or take the, uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man, when you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do, you know? There's a, a bunch of people that will say, yeah, well, I have a family, so, you know, it's a great idea for you to just go out there and go crazy. I have people to support. You need to listen. Stop saying that. Stop saying any of those things. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f*** it is, everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. 
everyone has issues. If you have time to pursue a hobby, if you have time to do anything in your life, you can better yourself. And here's one way you never better yourself. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not. That shit is dangerous. When you give yourself an escape. Yeah, well, that's easy for you to say. You know, you do this, you do this, you do this. Tr trust me. Everybody has a hard road. I wanted to jump out a window several times during my young life. I wanted to jump in front of a train and just end it because it's too much pressure. Not really. But you know what I'm saying. Theoretically. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and, and moments in your life where it's really f difficult and you're trying to figure out what the f your path is going to be. It's hard as sh**. But Stefan and I were talking about this before the podcast starts that that is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character. Show me a great man who's the son of a great man. You know, that's what we're saying. These kids that are born billionaires, you're f you're, f you're never going to be a self-made person. You have a backup trust for your backup trust for your trust, and y you're f man. I'm fascinated by martial arts. I'm fascinated by comedy. I'm fascinated by many, many different things. I don't understand when people say they're bored. Because if I had the time to live a hundred lives, I'd be speaking different languages, I'd be living in different countries, I would, I would try a, a number of different careers, because I think there's a lot of unbelievably fascinating, puzzling, complex things that you could study in this world. Mm. That's just me and my personality, but that's a personality also that I've cultivated over years of Would challenges. Would you like that as a kid, too? Well, I was involved in martial arts very early, yeah. and I think that is one of the things that motivated me to uh, explore difficult tasks because through difficult tasks you learn an incredible amount about yourself and uh, you through through the fire of competition you get to understand you get to understand uh, motivation you get to understand the resistance that you have inside your mind to doing hard work mm. you get to understand the rewards of discipline like you don't truly appreciate relaxation unless you've worked hard mm. and that is the yin and the yang of life and I've said this to to the point of people getting sick of it, but one of the worst decisions a man can make, I can only speak for men, obviously, um, is to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't think you should try to be comfortable. I think what you should try to do is try to earn comfort. Mm -hmm. And if you if you can get a day off where you, you, you've you worked hard and you've you know, accomplished goals, that day off will be so sweet. When I work hard and I sit in front of the TV, I enjoy the shit out of it. I put my feet <laughs> up. I have a nice drink. You know, I, I enjoy my free time. one of those chairs time. that nids your back or something I like that? I do have one of those. Do you really? Those are great. They're yeah. great, right? Yeah. I don't use it that much, though. Honestly, I'm more of a workaholic than I should be, probably. If, if the, the balance was I probably should relax more than I do, but I never feel like I earned it. But that's part of the reason why when I do feel like I earned it, I can enjoy it. It's because I am more connected to the idea that I need to to accomplish things. Mm. And, to, and, and it's not, not like for anybody else's benefit other than my own or anybody else's approval other than my own. I just, when I have a task, whether it's uh, I, today I'm going to write a thousand words, you know, or 2,000 or whatever the number is. If I don't do that, I don't, I'm not, I write things down. Like I'll write down a list of things that get accomplished that day. And if I don't accomplish that, I'll get sick. Like I'll, it'll drive me crazy. If I can't fill out that list, that drives me nuts, you know, but that's what led me to be a championship level martial artist. That's mm. what led me to achieve. The, it's like that. It's the reinforcement of those goals like understanding that the, you can achieve those goals it's going to be difficult you're going to push through the difficulty and then you're going to understand what difficulty truly is and how much of it is just mental how much of it is just in your mind this adversity to to uh, difficult task or to struggle you know and a lot of people have that they're scared they're scared of of complications they're scared of of failure failure is a big one that people are afraid of but failure is one of the most important things you could ever have as far as like the motivation to do things differently mm. one of the reasons why i think that i'm good at friendships and relationships is because i failed at them in the past one of the things that i'm good at comedy is because i bombed on stage one of the reasons why i'm good at work is because i've been a sh worker in the past and i know the the feeling of failure the feeling of uh, of shame of being like a weak non-motivated lazy person that's a weak feeling it's mm. a you don't respect yourself 
You know, and I have this phrase that I use all the time to people to, to try to motivate people. I say that be the hero in your own movie. Pretend that if mm. your life was a movie and your life started now, what would the hero do? What would the person that you respect do? What would the person that you admire, the person that inspires you, what would they do? Well, do that. Sh <laughs> and if you do that, you slowly build momentum. You like, today I did what I wanted to do. Today I started a class in yoga. I did this. I did all these things that I was saying I wasn't going to do. And now I feel momentum. And yeah. momentum is a very important point in people's lives. That's why some folks don't like to take days off because they feel like they're losing momentum. And they sort of have to restart the wheel up again after a vacation. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit. And then one day something goes wrong. And I mean, that's why s spoiled kids are so sad. Like a spoiled young boy is one of the saddest things ever. A young boy that becomes a man and can't take care of himself. And his dad has to keep on rescuing him. His dad has to keep on bailing him out of situations and giving him money. I've met guys like that. And that is a crippling affliction when they don't have the character themselves to be able to get by in life. They constantly need someone to help them and bail them out. Even as a grown man, I've met guys in their 40s that still need help from their parents. I'm like, what the f***, man? <sighs> You're never going to get it right because somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get shit done. There's sometimes we have to f pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed. And if you don't do that and you just keep calling on your daddy and your daddy keeps rescuing you, you never develop those tools. You never develop that ability to recognize what you're doing wrong with your life. Because you're, you're soft. you got a cushiony. you got a safety net, a safety net for your safety net. If you had a kid, obviously you do have a kid, but say if you had like a 20-year-old and he's just a f doper where he wake and bakes and doesn't get anything done. He's just always like hanging out with his friends and playing video games and he's just a f loser. Yeah. I, I, I wish there was a way you could show someone like that, like, I know that you're getting some comfort and satisfaction out of just laying around, doing nothing, eating, getting fat, but your life would feel better and richer if you had a goal, you chase that goal, you accomplish some things, you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing, maybe you're into drawing comic books, maybe yeah. you're into uh, making pottery or sculptures, or who, but find whatever the f that is and pursue that instead of doing nothing like the people that are doing nothing those are the real people I mean, look doing something might be as simple as like that alex honnold guy he just climbs rocks but he's world-class rock climber though. it's something but and it's also a goal of his, of yeah. his and he's also the best at it right? yes yeah but those those people who smoke pot all day and do it, those are also the guys who hate on Joe Rogan for being in shape. You know what I'm saying? Or being disciplined. Or get on Kevin Hart's Instagram and hate on him. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't, it, it's their own insecurities. I see what you're saying. But I, I would assume they would get motivated by seeing other people do something with their lives. Like that should be motivating, not. Yeah, but if you grew up, if you grew up with losers and you're around a bunch of people with shitty attitudes, especially if it's in your household, <clears throat> I was very lucky that uh, both my mom and my stepdad, they're not, they're not, they're the least hater people I've ever met in my life. They're just not haters in any way. Like if someone's doing well, they're always like, wow, look at this guy or like, wow, look at her. Yeah, or, wow, celebrate. look at him. There was never any hate in my house in terms of uh, other people's success. But if you grew up with a dad, and your dad's like, yeah, these f all these rich assholes, this f p he thinks she's a badass, and this, p you know, these people that look at other people's success, and instead of saying, wow, that guy did a lot of work. Like the way, I'm a successful person, but the way I look at Kevin Hart, he exhausts me, you know, or The Rock. Those guys exhaust me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, I feel lazy next to those guys. Like, they do so much. Like, those guys are so overbearingly ambitious you know but some people they see that and they compare themselves and they don't like it so they get started getting really shitty. and it's like a natural feeling to try to chip away at that person and the worst people that you know are